Lorena and Gordon have a joint business. The ratio of the amount of money Lorena invested in the business to the amount of money Gordon invested in the business is 2 to 1. They, the two plan on dividing two-thirds of the profit according to the following ratio, 2 to 1. Lorena will get two parts and Gordon will get one part. The ratio of the total number of hours Lorena spends doing business-related work to the total number of hours Gordon spends doing business-related work is 5 to 1. The two plan on dividing the remaining one-third of the profit according to the following ratio, 5 to 1. Lorena gets five parts, Gordon gets one part. Let's summarize this part of the question. Um, Lorena and Gordon, they're working together. Their two-thirds of their profit will be divided between the two in this ratio and the remaining one-third of the profit will be divided between the two in this ratio. Alright, so let's move forward and let's see what the question is really asking for. One month, Lorena's share of profit was $4,800 more than that of Gordon. So one month Lorena made $4,800 more than what Gordon made. How much money did Gordon make that month? Alright, I'm going to do this problem visually. This is a question. Questions like this show up on GMAT all the time. Um, some of you would say that the visual method takes too long and I agree it does take too long but the idea of the visual method is to give you the conceptual understanding that you need to do the math any way you want to do it you don't have to do it visually you use the visual method to understand the math and then you can do it completely symbolically using only arithmetic you can incorporate algebra if you want to so it's totally up to you the the power of the visual method is it helps us understand what's going on. Then what we do with it is really our business. If we want to throw it away, we can throw it away. Again, I'm going to paraphrase the question uh, before we look at the solution. Two thirds of the two thirds of the profit will be divided in the ratio of two to one and the remaining one third of the profit will be divided in the ratio of five to one between Lorena and Gordon. Okay, so this is a summary of what we gleaned from the first part of the question. Two-thirds of the profit and one-third of the profit. This is profit. Now, <clears throat> profit. Now, this part is cut into two to one. Two parts goes to two parts go to Lorena, one part go, goes to Gordon, so on and so forth. So the problem here is how to cut this and this into the same number of parts so that you can split the pieces between Lorena and Gordon evenly. Well this has to be cut in six parts. This has to be cut in, this could be cut in three parts three parts, but let's cut each into six equal parts. Take a look at this. Why did I choose six? Well, I have to cut this into six parts. If I cut these into six parts as well, I can easily split them between Lorena and Gordon in the ratio of two to one. Another way to look at it is this. You want to cut each piece into a number of parts that's divisible by both 3 and 6. Where am I getting 3 from? 3 is the sum of these two numbers and 6 is the sum of these two numbers. So you want to cut each piece into a number that is divisible by both 3 and 6 and 6 is the smallest choice you could come up with. Now what happens? I cut this into six parts, this into six parts, this into six parts right here. Now Lorena will get two times as many of these as Gordon. Okay? 
Again, Lorena will get two times as many as Gordon from here, and she will get five times as many as Gordon from here. All right, so let's see what she gets. Okay. Well, Lorena got four parts, Gordon got two. Lorena got four parts, Gordon got two. Four for Lorena, two for Gordon. Four for Lorena, two for Gordon. Again, five for Lorena, one for Gordon. Now take a look at this. The entire profit was really cut into 18 equal pieces. Entire profit was cut into 18 equal pieces. Lorena got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. One, let's count it once again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Lorena got 13 equal parts, or 13 eighteenths of the profit. And Gordon got the remaining 5 parts, and you can count it. So basically, Gordon got 5 eighteenths of the profit. Lorena got 13 eighteenths of the profit. Let's erase all that and move forward. So that's the summary of the previous slide. Lorena got 13, Gordon got 5. Now the question says Lorena made $4,800 more than Gordon. What does that mean? Take a look at this. Lorena got 13 parts, Gordon got 5 parts, Lorena got 8 parts more. And if Lorena made $4,800 more, each part has to be 4,800 divided by 8. Now you really want to get that. If Lorena made $4,800 more than Gordon and Lorena got 18 parts more than Gordon, that difference between the net amount Lorena made and the total number of parts that she got more than Gordon must be proportionate. So you take this, divide that by 8, you're going to get 600. Let's erase it and move to our previous, next slide. That's exactly what we talked about. So we are concluding each little square is worth $600 from here. Really want to get this. This is how much money, how much more she made. This is how many more squares she had. You divide, you get 600. So Lori, each square is worth $600. Now the question is, how much money did Gordon make? Well, we know Gordon made five parts. If each part is worth $600, Gordon must have made 600 times five or $3,000. That's my answer.